First, I would like to thank uh, Colorado University for giving us this great opportunity to share our story with uh, you all. It's really an honor for us whenever we have this chance to share our story with people, and our prayers is that God uh, use our story and talk to our story with people. And uh, when we share our story, we always tell people that, uh, you know, we are not, thank you. We are not uh, two heroes, we are just two ordinary uh, people, women, that uh, God used us uh, and uh, revealed himself uh, to us and did many miracles in our, our lives and uh, he is really our hero. You know, when we go somewhere for speaking, we just pray and ask the Holy Spirit to talk to people's hearts because, you know, as we mentioned, it's not about us. Of course, it's our story, but we believe that God is using our story to talk to people's hearts, and it's all about Him. It's illegal in Iran to have a, a Bible, and um, there in Iran there is just a false and distorted version of Bible, which called Barnabas Bible. <coughs> and uh, people cannot find the real version of Bible. In Barnabas Bible, it says that after uh, Jesus Muhammad will come, and Jesus uh, was prophet of uh, God. That's why we decided to put the right Bible in people's hand. And we started from the north of Tehran to the south. We wanted to cover each area. That's why uh, usually at night we carried one, about one hand, uh, 114 New Testaments in our bag, uh, backpack and visited one area and put those are New Testaments in many boxes. So every day we were evangelizing uh, people. We believe that we are two evangelists and we love to talk about Jesus with uh, people. And every day whenever we went for shopping, eating at restaurant, doing our chores, we were talking to people and handing the Bible as a gift. And as you know, all these activities are illegal in Iran because no one is allowed to promote any religion except Islam. That's why some people had report about our activities and the Iranian government uh, arrested us in 2009. You know, when I looked through the people, I saw Marzi with three guards in front of the door. At that moment, my mind was in shock. I, you know, I thought that I needed to do something to at least call someone and let them know what was happening. But um, <coughs> I couldn't do anything because I was in shock. And I just opened the door, they entered our apartment, they ransacked everywhere. They took both of us with all our belongings, like Bibles, Jesus movies, um, personal belongings, laptops, um, to, uh, and everything that they had discovered uh, in our apartment to the security police. We were in the security police the whole first day, and we had long hours of interrogation by our first interrogator. We were threatened to physical torture. Um, I remember uh, one day they sent us to a dark and dirty cell in the basement and had told us that you must give us all the information about your friends, your networks, all your activities as Christians, otherwise we will beat you until you vomit blood. I cannot even explain by words how scary was that situation for both of us. Um, we had never had such an experience. It was the first time in our life that we were facing you know, fears like that. I can say that the only thing that strengthened us during that time was praying for each other, but was the presence of the Holy Spirit. Sometimes we couldn't even pray, we couldn't find words, because the situation, the condition was very scary, and I remember we were just praying in tongues for each other, and I, I, I could really feel that the Holy Spirit was leading us in prayers and strengthening us. I can say that physically we were under so much pressure, for days we did not have anything to eat or drink, uh, we could not see the light, but, um, you know, as we could see God's miracles and how he was using us as a tool to give his message to our fellow prisoners and to some guards, we became so encouraged and we understood that God had a plan for us, even in that dark place. 